All right, what the heck is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back in the garage with the 2020 Velocity Duty. What we have on the agenda for today is we have to address the oil in the intake. So the, in the last video, if you guys caught it, I appreciate it if you caught it. If not, you can check it out if you want to. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button on that video and this video. I'm asking a lot of you right out of the beginning, right out of the gate. So what we're doing is we're addressing the oil in the intake. And it's not just the intake, it's kind of throughout the entire intercooler piping. It's the cold side, it's the hot side, it's the intercooler, throttle valve, intake plenum, pretty much all of that is soaked with oil. So real quick, we have the throttle valve. You can see that it's just um, kind of like sopping wet with oil. This is right off of, this is on the cold side part of the deal and it is completely gunked up and wet and, uh, and, and very, very, very dirty. Hot side, this is after turbo. This is this is turbo to intercooler. Um, just has It just has wet residue of oil in there. Cold side pipe is what connects to the throttle valve and you can just see the amount of oil that is in there. And I mean, it, the truck's already breathing enough bad air from the EGR. So what we're doing now with the CCV situation with all this oil is you're combining all of the exhaust gas and you're combining that with oil, like literal oil, oil soaked air, that as soon as it kind of hits anything such as like the sides of the piping sides of throttle valve any surface that that air kind of hits and runs into it kind of turns back into a liquid i'm not a scientist what can't get into it i'm i'm on a whole nother plant right now bud like a person like person who yeah comcast 285 a month for two tvs it smells like it smells smoky in here. It definitely does. Is I, I think we might have a leak in our in our stack over there. And here here's the hot side. So this is after the hot side pipe. It comes through, hits that little boot, goes into the intercooler, and like there is literal oil laying in the ribs of the of the coupler here. Watch this. No, I didn't show this part. That that is wet. That is actual oil. Oh, like yeah. that, that is oil right there. Oh yeah. So if you look on the driver side of your engine bay, driver side. You see a big black box, that big black box that's right there. So crankcase vent, meaning pressure builds in your bottom end just from the engine rotating itself. So pressure builds down there. Pistons go up and down, the piston comes down, it builds pressure, blow by, whatever. Pressure comes from different things. But pressure builds in your bottom end, such as your crankcase. That box right there is your crankcase ventilation system. So crankcase pressure comes out of a hole, goes through that box, it's supposed to separate the oil. The oil then, there's a secondary port on the box itself to drain the actual liquid type oil and then the gases follow this plastic tube around, connect into the lower intake port and go in front and through the turbo and then go throughout the intercooler piping into your engine. So obviously what you can see from all the intercooler piping uh, such as hot side, cooled side, intake plenum, we're going to take a look at this real quick too. Um, so what you can see from all of this in here is that the crankcase ventilation, ventilation system it doesn't seem to be separating the oil from the air as good as it should. Why is it like that? Why is it like what? Why does Ford having that much oil, why, why do they send that much oil soaked air back into the engine as combustible air? Like they're using that as, as fresh air along with exhaust gas. But the thing is, is the truck runs good. Like the truck in stock form, it, it runs good. It don't matter. Just because I'm a fast runner doesn't mean I'm healthy. Just because I can run from here to there quick doesn't mean I'm a healthy person. Oh my God. It's not a healthy person in there. That's, That's just a healthy. quick truck that runs quick, fast, it's good, but that doesn't mean it's healthy. So four, one, two, three, four bolts. And I, th I think that's it. I'm getting diesel everywhere. But it are, oh yeah. It's already popped out. <clears throat> now there's definitely oil in here. And I don't want to dump it all over everything, but I kind of don't know how to get it out. Maybe turn it. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, well, that's diesel running off the top. This is supposed to separate the oil, but it doesn't really separate the oil. It opens up a lot of space in there. This is a huge box. Look at all the room in there for activities. This is the, uh, the drain port where the oil drains out of that box into here. I'm trying to not let oil run down the side of the engine, but it's just, it's wanting to. Oh yeah. All right, so we gotta act quick. We gotta get our plug set up because that's just plunging oil out of that thing right there. So this is your, this is the plug that covers that whole thing is this drain. So this is your rear one, this is the back side, front side here. 
this is the plug that drain that plugs this hole for the drain. You know what I'm saying? I'm having a tough time getting my words out today. We should have found out what size that Allen bolt was. There was enough oil on that rim where it lubed the O-ring, so don't roast me. There's three steps to installing the CCV reroute. Step one is complete. Plug the uh, drain input. Plugged. Good. Step two would be to now put on the hose and the cap for the back actual vent hole. And then step three is to put your rubber cap over your intake nipple thing here. It goes to your lower intake manifold that goes in the turbo. Three steps on installation. Very, very easy. Everything in there wants to cut you. So rubber rubber cap goes over the intake port of the CCV back to the intake. Zip tie that on. That's very self-explanatory. We have the center cap in to the uh, system here for the drain plug. And then in the back, all the way back there, the back here is the, the outlet for the crankcase vent. We have our hose, comes up over the brake booster, goes down, and we're going to route that down underneath of the cab on the passenger side. But we'll figure that out um, here in a second. Oil in, oil in the intake's done. No more of that. We're, we're done with that. So now... You actually didn't have to pull the uh, fuel filter housing. Um, you just had to disconnect the fuel filter lines, pull the filter out. You could have left that little bowl in here. We pulled it out just because now it's gonna give us easier access to put this on. And you don't need to take this off for the CCV kit. This was just off because we were doing the disaster kit earlier. We're gonna fish all this back together. We're gonna do a start, see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Whoa, dude. Did you hear that? Okay, so anyways, JB bailed on me. We're here alone at the shop. I impulsively purchased the lift kit for the truck because I want I wanted this. So here's what we got. I went with a ProComp 6-inch 4-link lift kit. Now, the reason I went with ProComp is out of all the other lifts on the market, there's a ton of lifts. This is not sponsored. I didn't any kind of discount, nothing like that. I'm not working with them in any way. Um, I chose this lift kit for one reason. The reason being the look of their bottom 4-link bar. Boom! There it is. Okay. So this is the Pro Comp four link kit, and that is the lower control arm. So you have you know four links, you have an upper and a lower. Um, the uppers are just you know standard. I don't, I don't know what box they're in. Maybe this box. Oh, yeah, here's the upper. So uppers are just your standard, your standard four link bar. Okay, you put your joint in the end, whatever. There's there's your upper. This is your upper leg. It's huge, it's heavy. Um, we're gonna put that back in there. So over here is the lower four link control arm, radius arm, and this thing just looks sick. Fabricated style with the inlay with the things, and I don't know, I, I just think that that looks really good for a economical type, kind of off the shelf lift kit. I think this gives you like a super custom look without breaking the bank. Yeah, the, the kit's only like 2,200 bucks, which isn't, isn't bad at all. So that's a, that's a pretty economical kit. Um, it looks good. I did some research and I didn't see any bad reviews. Um, I, I seen that it rides good. Everything fitment wise is, is good with it. So we're going to install this thing. I'm going to let you guys know how it is. We're going to take you through the process of installing it. Um, fitment wise, installation bolts, make sure everything's included properly. Full overview, full, full, full install review on the Pro Comp Stage 3 four link kit for the uh, 2020 F250 67 power show. I first seen this kit, what made me see the lower control arms, and I, I seen those and I like them. I seen it on Lacey Blair's truck. If you guys probably know who that is on Instagram. Yeah, I seen those lower control arms and I'm like, man, those look good. Um, I, and, I, and I checked it out and the price was okay and it, it seems like it rides good. So, yep, that's the kit we went with. Pro Comp Stage 3, 
four link kit with their sweet lower ones. Man, those are, I think those are gonna look cool. And what about those powder coated velocity blue? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, join the family, join the journey, 2020, six, seven. Let me know some modifications that you guys wanna see. I know a lot of people are talking about the one modification, which we're gonna do, but we're gonna do in uh, the uh, a different way. So, but anyways, let me know some more modifications that you guys might wanna see for the 2020 and up. Um, I'm talking any brand, any brand across the board. And we'll check it out and see if we wanna do it. But that's it. As always, you guys are freaking awesome. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.